Good morning friends. Today we shall be talking about major painters of renaissance. This is the seventh module of paper two. And first we shall be discussing Leonardo da Vinci, 1452 to 1519. Our intention with this chapter is to acquaint about Leonardo da Vinci's life and works and understand the influence his work had on the ages to come. Let us look at what we shall be learning in this module. Influences, drawing of human anatomy, notes and journals scientific drawings, cartography, botany, light, perspective, and paintings. Leonardo da Vinci, April 15, 1450 to May 2, 1519 was a scientist, mathematician, engineer, inventor, anatomist, painter, sculptor, architect, botanist, musician and writer. A perfect example of the Renaissance man. His infinite curiosity only led to his many inventions. For Da Vinci, to draw was to understand. Born as the illegitimate son of a notary, Piero da Vinci, and a peasant girl, Caterina, at Vinci in the region of Florence. Leonardo was educated in the studio of the renowned Florentine painter, Verrocchio. Much of his earlier working life was spent in the service of Ludovico I.L. Moro in Milan. He later worked in Rome, Bologna and Venice, spending his final years in France at the home given to him by the King Franco I. At an early age, Leonardo da Vinci moved to Florence where he apprenticed with the painter and sculptor Verrocchio. Verrocchio's capacity for brilliance was obvious even at the early stage of his life. He often experimented with different artistic forms and techniques. In the Italian art environment, he was the vanguard of using oil in painting. His work sparked a new style of art in Italy. In 1481, at approximately the age of 30, Da Vinci moved to Milan to work for the Duke of Milan. It was during this time in Milan that Leonardo produced one of the most famous works of art and arguably the most famous frescoes in history. The Last Supper, 1905 to 1498, during the first decade of the 16th century, the Italian city, states and territories launched into war that spanned from Milan to Rome. This war combined with the Catholic Church's condemnation of his work led Da Vinci to flee to Paris under the patronage of the French court of Francis I. While living in France, he painted the world's renowned Mona Lisa 1503 to 1506, the world's most well-known portrait. His interests were very broad and related to so many subjects. 
that he usually failed to finish what he started. The lack of stick to its nest resulted in his completing very less number of works in his career. His work covered four main themes, painting, architecture, the elements of mechanics and human anatomy. Influences. Florence in the time of Leonardo's youth was the center of Christian humanist thought and culture. During the time that Leonardo became an apprentice to Verrocchio, he was influenced by the sculptor Donne Teller, painter Susilo, Piero della Francesca, and Fra Frippo Lippi, sculptor Luca della Rubia, and architect and writer Leon Battista Alberti. His teachers were the successful artists of the next generation. Verrocchio, Antonio Paolo Yulo, and the portrait sculptor Mino da Fiesol. With Alberti, Leonardo visited the Medicis and met humanist philosophers such as Marsiglio Fessino, Cristoforo Landino, and others. Also associated with the Academy of the Medici was Leonardo's contemporary, the brilliant young poet and philosopher Pico della Mirandola. Drawings of Human Anatomy. Da Vinci was majorly interested in the structure and function of the body. His drawings of the anatomy are the earliest naturalistic depictions of the human body. While his earlier drawings seemed bound by medieval traditions, his later drawings are based on his own dissections. He had dissected 30 bodies. His drawings combined the study of structure, revealed through the quick eye and through his habit of precise artistic portrayal. With a study of function, he never separated function from structure in his thinking. These drawings not only reflect his superb draftsmanship, but his passionate interest in how life originated. He wished to explain all natural human phenomena scientifically. He combines in him virtually every aspect of scientific and artistic endeavor, making his style investigative, preliminary, and experimental, as seen in the clarity of depiction of bone structures. Vitruvian man depicts the image of a man superimposed in two positions. In addition to the visual representation, Leonardo included detailed notes based on his writings of the ancient classical architect Vitruvius. Vitruvius viewed the human body as the preliminary source of proportion in the classical style of architecture. Leonardo paid homage to Vitruvius in his illustration of the relationship between ideal human proportions and geometry. Vitruvian men combined Leonardo's study of art, science, anatomy, geometry with his veneration for writings of antiquity.
notes and journals. Da Vinci did not see much difference between the science and art and studied each phenomena with both scientific and creative bent of mind. His observations were recorded in 13,000 pages of notes and drawings made and maintained daily throughout Leonardo's life and travels as he made continual observations of the world around him. Leonardo's writings are mostly mirror image cursive. The reason may have been more a practical expediency than for reasons of secrecy, as it often suggested. Since Leonardo wrote with his left hand, it is probable that it was easier for him to write from right to left. His notes and drawings display an enormous range of interests and preoccupations, some as mundane as list of groceries and people who owed him money, and some as intriguing as designs for wings and shoes for walking on water. There are compositions for paintings, studies of detail, drapery, studies of faces and emotions, of animals, babies, dissertations, dissections, plant studies, rock formations, whirlpools, war machines, helicopters, Scientific drawings from 1485 to 1490, Leonardo produced lots of drawings on subjects such as flying machines, geometry, mechanics, municipal construction, canals and architecture, designing everything from churches to fortresses. His studies from his period also contain designs for advanced weapons, including a tank and other war vehicles, various combat devices, and submarines and helicopters. He understood the principles of governing momentum, centripetal force, friction, and the aerofoil and applied these to his inventions. He invented the ball bearing, roller bearing, and needle bearing, three miniature machines upon which our modern society operates. He also drew the first exploded view of a machine. A scuba diving gear was also invented by him. He developed autonomous robots for his wealthy patterns. One such machine could be classed as first mechanically powered vehicle as well as being the first remotely operated vehicle. Cartography. Leonardo created a map of Caesar Borgia's stronghold. A town plan of Emola in order to win his patronage. Maps were extremely rare at the time and it would have seemed like a new concept. Upon seeing it, Cesar hired Leonardo as his chief military engineer and architect. Later in the year, Leonardo produced another map for his pattern. 
one of the Chiena Valley. Tuscany so as to give his patron a better overlay of the land and greater strategic position. He created his map in conjunction with his other project of constructing a dam from the sea to Florence in order to allow supply of water to sustain the canal during all seasons. Botany. Leonardo was first person to note that the number of rings of a tree were the same as its age. He was also first person to describe the arrangements of leaves in plants. Leonardo's study of plants resulting in many beautiful drawings in his notebooks was to record the appearance and growth and the individual identity of each variety as an observer rather than a scientific recording. His Virgin of Rocks is an excellent example of the same. The drawing of the flowers below is an observer's recording of the various stages in the development of flower. Light. According to Da Vinci, there are four kinds of light. Diffused light as that of atmosphere, direct as that of sun, third is reflected light, and the fourth one that passes through translucent bodies such as paper. In his paintings, he introduced chiaroscuro, a style of shading that dominates tone more than color. So, thus, he painted a broader range of luminance than he really sees. His Mona Lisa and the Virgin of Rocks were an excellent example of such a style. Perspective. His perspective study for adoration of Magi is an excellent piece. In his working plans laid out in scientific form, Leonardo created a perspective grid by drawing a series of horizontal lines parallel to the picture plane. Then he drew a series of lines intersecting the horizontals and converging at the vanishing point, which is just to the left of the figure on a rearing horse. All architectural forms in the study are aligned with the grid so that sides of the buildings are either parallel or perpendicular to the picture plane. Paintings. Da Vinci taught that the best balance of facial aesthetics exists when the face can be divided into three equal vertical dimensions, from the chin to the bottom of the nose, from the bottom of the nose to brow and from the brow to hairline. As you see in the image here, in addition, the aesthetic face can be divided into fifths that approximate the width of one eye. He also introduced posture in visual sense and body facing the side and facing the front to the observer. He created a visual illusion of painted person looking directly to the observer. This created a very unique experience to the observer and it felt more connected to the portrait and could experience emotions more realistically. The posture of Mona Lisa reflects this very clearly. Mona Lisa, 1503 to 1505, epitomizes Leonardo's synthesis of nature, architecture, human form, geometry, and character. He thinks of the human body as a metaphor for the earth and compares 
flesh to the soil, bones to rocks, and blood to waterways. This metaphorical style of thinking, which recurs in visual form throughout his painting and drawings, is characteristic of the Leonardo's genius. The figure forms a pyramidic shape as attention shifts from the figure to landscape. Light plays an important role in coloring the figure in subdued dark yellow tones and the landscape is a blue grow spumator giving a very misty atmosphere to the painting and character. There are more parallels here. The form of Mona Lisa repeats triangular mountains and her transparent well echoes the filtered light of the mist. The curved aqueduct continues into the highlighted drapery fold over her left shoulder and the spiral road on his right is repeated in the short curves on her sleeves. This, these in turn correspond to the line of her fingers. The Last Supper 1495 to 1498, undoubtedly one of the greatest work of Da Vinci, is also a reflection of perspective, light and geometry. Look at how the apostles are arranged in four groups of three, echoing the four wall hangings on each side of the room and the three windows on the wall behind Jesus. Jesus forms a triangle. As he extends his arms forward, his triangular form corresponds to the triple windows and both allude to the three persons of the Trinity. The curved pediment over the central window functions as an architectural halo, reminding that Christ is the light of the world. This aspect of the Jesus is reinforced in the perspective construction. The orthogonals radiate outward from his head, so Christ becomes the sun or literal light of the world, extending his rays to the world outside the picture. Leonardo, instead of using reliable technique of fresco, worked directly on dry in, into Narco, a thin layer of smooth plaster with an oil and tempera paint. He had hoped to achieve freedom and flexibility of painting on wood. The result was disastrous, resulting in a surface which was subject to mold and to flaking. The painting deteriorated in no time, and by the middle of the 16th century, its figures could be seen only with difficulty. During the World War II, the painting narrowly escaped complete destruction. When the painting was restored again in the 20th century, the intent was to remove everything that was not painted by Leonardo when they had finished. Very little of the original image remained. As a result, several of the figures were nearly blank and had to be repainted. And therefore, the present appearance of the Last Supper is thus rather bland compared to its pre-cleaned state. Its colors are paler and much of the shading has been lost, giving the figures a flattened appearance.
the virgin and child with Saint Anne, 1510, is another important piece of Da Vinci, illustrating nature and geometry. The three generations, Anne, Mary's mother, Mary and Jesus, are set in a triangular pyramid and landscape, representing past, present and future. The lamb and the tree also reflect the future and the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. In use of both chiaroscuro and spumato, he has interrelated the figures and landscape. The well of Anne becomes the background, filters to depict the atmospheric mist. Anne becomes the metaphor for the rocky landscape through the zigzag of her left arm and also the symbolic architectural foundation of three generations in painting. In his Virgin on Rocks, he added a figure of young John the Baptist, who balances the composition at the left, pulled into dialogue with his younger cousin, Jesus, by the long protective arm of his Virgin. She draws attention to her child by extending her other hand over his head, while the enigmatic figure of the angel who looks out without actually making eye contact with the viewer points to the center of interaction. The details of the flowers and other foliage is as minute as it can be. Other elements, spumato and chiaroscuro, and the misty atmosphere also are present in the composition. In 1466, at the age of 14, Leonardo was apprenticed to the artist Andrea Di Sione, known as Verrocchio whose workshop was one of the finest in the Florence. Leonardo collaborated with Verrocchio on his Baptist of Christ, painting the young angel holding Jesus' robe in a manner that was so far superior to his masters that Verrocchio put down his brush and never painted again.